Hello, my dear grade 11 students. Welcome to an exciting and thrilling subject, Earth and Life Sciences, intended for senior high school students like you. I am Mom Rosalyn Eugenio de la Serna, and I'll be teaching this subject. I can't wait to get to know you guys this year. I know you are all excited to start our class, and so do I. So please stay in your most comfortable position. Chill out, smile, and enjoy. Our first topic is about our very own abode, our home since time immemorial, our own planet, the majestic Earth. Everyone, our lesson one, Earth as a unique planet. In the end of this lesson, you are all expected to identify the characteristics of the Earth that supports life and expound how the characteristics of the Earth sustain the needs of living organism. Sounds fun, right? Earth is a unique planet. It is the only planet capable of sustaining life because of the right combination of elements, molecules, and ions that to act under the right physical conditions to make up the processes supportive to life. It has an atmosphere that serves as a thermostat that is necessary to regulate its surface temperature. It also contains the right amount of liquid water and oxygen that serve as essential compounds needed in the biological processes such as cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Earth scientists describe this planet as a life support system. It is in the perfect location in the solar system. The mechanism of its rotation and revolution are well synchronized to bring about changes in the weather and climate. Its tilt relative to the orbital plane promotes seasons as we know it. In the Milky Way galaxy alone, there are about 1 billion planets. However, only the Earth is habitable. Other planets may be too hot or too cold. They may also be too big or too small. Other planets may not have an atmosphere or a magnetic field or may not be in an orbit at all. Fortunately, planet Earth possesses all the features and characteristics that make it habitable for all living forms. Before we proceed, let us detour for a while. Let's recall what we had when we were at our previous grades. My favorite topic indeed, ladies and gentlemen, our solar system. You see, this is one of the unforgettable science topics I've ever had when I was in grade school. I really love reciting the sequence of the planets that comprise the solar system. If you don't mind, can you recite it with me? Ready? Let's start naming the planets starting from the one nearest to the sun. We had Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Among these planets, the only habitable planet, the place where we live and survive, the planet Earth. I guess few of you have difficulty reciting the arrangement of the planets, even now you're in senior high school level. Well, to make it easier for you, I have this mnemonics. Remember this sentence. My very educated mother just served us noodles. Take a look at the first letter of each word. For instance, the first letter of the first word is M, which stands for mercury. Very as the second word as V as its first letter, so that means it stands for Venus and so on. Guys, please do take note of this. Our mnemonics for us to recite the sequence of the planets of the solar system. My very educated mother just serve us noodles. It's fun, right? 
again, planet Earth possesses all the features and characteristics that make it habitable for all living forms. Let us go through with each one of Earth's characteristics. The factors that make a planet habitable or able to harbor living things are location, atmosphere, size and mass, magnetic field, and presence of water. Let's start with the first factor, location. Earth is the third planet in the solar system. It is considered to be one of the inner planets next to Venus. Its distance from the sun is about 93 million miles and it takes about 500 seconds for sunlight to reach the Earth's surface. This distance from the sun is enough to support life. As we learned in our previous science lessons, the producers or organisms that manufacture their own food utilize the energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy that marks the beginning of food chains and complex food webs. This is the chemical equation called photosynthesis, which utilizes solar energy converting it into food that will be made available to life forms. The distance between Earth and Sun is strategic enough to put this essential chemical equation to work. If the Earth had been too close to the Sun, its surface would have been dry and lifeless just like Mercury and Venus. If it had been too far, like Uranus and Neptune, it would have been cold and dark. Earth's tactical location also prevents it from planetary collisions. The fact that Jupiter, the biggest planet in the solar system, is our neighbor, puts planet Earth in an advantage as far as life is taken into consideration. Between Mars and Jupiter are asteroid belts. Since Jupiter is so massive, its gravity is so strong that it pulls asteroids and other space debris towards itself, warding it away from the Earth. The second factor that makes a planet habitable is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the gaseous layer that envelopes the Earth. It regulates the planet's surface temperature. Most of the element that makes up the atmosphere is nitrogen, about 78%. If we compare the Earth to an apple, the atmosphere is relatively the size of its peel. However, due to its cooling mechanisms, it protects the living things to be directly affected with harmful radiation. Photodissociation is the process by which ozone molecules, or O3, in the stratosphere is broken down, called the decomposition reaction, into elemental oxygen, or O, and diatomic oxygen, or O2, as it absorbs high-energy solar radiation and then convert it into low-energy radiation. This way, harmful High energy radiation will not go directly into the Earth's surface. The next factor is the size and mass. This is the relative size of planet Earth as compared to other terrestrial planets like Venus, Mars, and Mercury, as well as that of Pluto, which is now considered not a planet. Let's talk about the Earth's size. Its radius is 3,959 miles or 6,371 kilometers. That is according to NASA report in 2019. It has mass of 5.972 times 10 raised to 24 kilograms. The size of the Earth also plays a vital role in keeping its life support system afloat. The size of a planet is directly related to its gravitational pull. 
The acceleration due to gravity helps the planet maintain its atmosphere. So if the Earth had been bigger than it is, its gravity would have been stronger to the point of not keeping an atmosphere around it. If it had been too small, on the other hand, it would not have been able to sustain a gaseous layer since its gravity is too weak. Earth interacts gravitationally with the Sun. Its gravity, as a result of its mass, also keeps the Moon along its orbit. The Moon, as the only natural satellite of Earth, plays a vital role in the existence of all life forms. The next factor is the magnetic field. Our planet is a big ball of magnet. Its geographic north serves as its magnetic south, and its geographic south serves as its magnetic north. The region around Earth that is dominated by magnetic field is called magnetosphere, which extends to about 65,000 kilometers in space. Its magnetic properties are the result of its internal activities involving electric current flowing in the molten core made possible by its rotation. The inner core is the solid layer of the Earth and is made predominantly of iron. Since it is compressed by pressure due to Earth's gravity, it is solid in form. The outer core, on the other hand, is liquid in form and is made up predominantly of iron and nickel. As the Earth spins, the flow of liquid iron and nickel in the outer core produces electric current, thereby producing magnetic field. The invisible magnetic field then passes through the Earth's layer and into the space. This magnetic field shields Earth from the harmful surge of charged particles from the sun called solar winds and other space weather. Most of the particles of solar winds cannot cross the Earth because it gets deflected by the magnetic field. Without the magnetic field, Earth would have been as hot and lifeless as Mars. The next factor is the presence of water. Life as we know it is impossible without a biologically essential compound called water or H2O. Three-fourths of the Earth's surface are covered with water. Scientists have found out that there are other planets of the universe that contain water. However, this compound may exist as ice or vapor alone. On Earth, however, water exists as gas-forming clouds, as liquid in the form of oceans and lakes, and as solid in the form of ice cups. This is due to hydrologic cycle, or also known as the water cycle. Earth has the right amount of water to keep its habitability. Water has a cooling effect due to its heat capacity. It has the capacity to absorb heat without raising its own temperature. As a result, life on Earth will be benefited by the cooling effect of water. Wow! You just had the first lesson of the best subject, at least to me. <laughs> the Earth and Life Sciences. Congratulations! I really hope you've learned something from it, especially the appreciation of our unique planet Earth. Knowing all of the characteristics of our home planet, don't you think we, as Earth residents, have great responsibility to take care of it? Anyways, thank you for listening. Let us keep ourselves safe by staying at home. And yes! You are now ready to accomplish the activities related to this topic. Don't go any further and just focus on activities of this lesson. Feel free to reach out to me for any queries. May God bless us all.